Thank you again, uh, Malika. Um, I'll be presenting um, the reactive vaccination campaigns uh, in Nigeria. If I go back, um, cholera was first notified in Nigeria in, in 1970, towards the end of the year. And that led to an epidemic of uh, over 22,000 suspected cases and uh, 2,000, uh, over almost 3,000 deaths. However, between 1972 and 1990, Nigeria reported very few cases of uh, cholera. In 1991, we had another heavy outbreak, 59, uh, over 59, almost 60,000 uh, suspected cases. Um, and uh, in 2018, following the humanitarian emergencies in the Northeast region, and uh, the uh, displacement of uh, pop, uh, large source of populations, another major outbreak happened. And uh, this was because we had so many IDPs, especially in the Northeast, and uh, we had uh, up over 50,000 cases. Then this year, this year we have really, we have crossed the 100,000 uh, mark. And uh, when uh, Alika was presenting, she mentioned that um, in Africa, we had ab about 230,000 uh, cases, out of which 100,000 cases were in Nigeria. So I will speak about, I will speak on this later on. The, the, so the one thing we can uh, see is that from 1991 to 2021, um, the outbreaks became uh, regular. It became with more than 20,000 cases reported uh, over seven years in between. Uh, if you look at the charts on the top right side, uh, we see the uh, the spot map of the areas affected by this year's outbreak up to Epi week 46. Then down, uh, down then under it, we'll see the Epi curve over the period, 19, over 30 year period, 1991 to 2021, up to Epi week 46. So that what that slide shows us uh, is what, what I mentioned previously. Um, we can see that cholera hap uh, now happens in waves of two to four years in, uh, in Nigeria. So uh, that modeling is going to help us in, uh, uh, preparedness, in, in a pl uh, preparedness and planning. So um, the OCV use um, in Nigeria, I, I have to start by saying that cholera Nigeria is one of the uh, cholera endemic countries, as you all know, and cholera is reported throughout the year. The main driving forces include all wash conditions, seasonal flooding, and armed conflicts. We have a lot of IDPs. Some of them are in circumscribed places where you can reach, uh, reach them. Some of them uh, mix up with communities that are not experiencing crisis. Um, in Nigeria, the mainstay of cholera control, uh, as in other countries, uh, we have WASH interventions, community and laboratory surveillance, risk communication, and uh, we have case management, and then strong stakeholder coordination. In 2017, however, um, OCV campaign was conducted in Nebuku. There were quite a lot of IDPs. Um, in some camps, and then that led to the outbreak of uh, cholera. Once there are no, uh, we don't have access to wash facilities, the chances that cholera outbreak will happen becomes high. So the risk factors were there. The intervention, the campaign we did, the reactive campaign we did quickly led to the containment of uh, the outbreak in Bruno, and also in all other states where we did the reactive campaign. The same thing happened. So I just want to talk about, let's say, uh, we haven't done impact studies, but uh, uh, we, we can 
And let both tell you, we can say that uh, the dramatic effect, like one of the speakers mentioned, is there the moment you carry out uh, cholera uh, uh, OC, uh, OCV reactive vaccination. It's there. You just see the numbers begin to drop after uh, a few weeks. And uh, since then, uh, OCV has become adopted as an effective tool, an integral part of uh, multi sectoral strategies in cholera prevention and control in Nigeria. On the right side, uh, you can see the chart showing you all the timelines of all the OCV campaigns we have done from inception, both reactive and uh, preventive. Then um, the preventive campaigns, uh, as I mentioned in my uh, previous uh, presentation, uh, we did a hotspot mapping in 2018. That was before the introduction of the new GTFCC tool in 2019. And we identified 105 local governments that, that were hotspots and local government areas. I, as at that time, towards the end of 2018, in the last quarter, we were having a severe outbreak. So we applied to GTFCC to use um, non-emergency stockpile for emergency stock for emergency vaccination in uh, in 10 of the LGAs that were experiencing out, uh, outbreaks as at then. So uh, GTFCC approved, and then the campaigns were carried out between November 2018 and September 2019, the effect too was dramatic because subsequently in 2020 and 2020, uh, in 2019 and 2020, we didn't have much outbreak. Then the campaigns witnessed massive turnout in each of the uh, places uh, where we vaccinated. The acceptability level of, of OCV in Nigerian, community, in Nigerian communities among community members is very high. On the right side, you can see the preventive vaccinations we carried out, uh, the total number of doses and others, and the coverage uh, are there. We also did a coverage survey, which um, the, uh, the average, the weighted average uh, of the coverage survey gave us a 7% uh, coverage. AEFI was of negligible, uh, significance in all the campaigns. Then, 2021, this year, we, like I said before, we have had profuse outbreak of cholera in several places, in several, in, a, in 32, in 32 um, local, uh, in, 30, in 32 states and uh, federal capital territory with over 400,000 cases. So ICG approved uh, a total of uh, 5.1 million doses. And we have done, we carry out the campaigns in Belgium and Yobe states. We are still waiting for the next batch of vaccines to complete the campaign in Jigawa state, the, uh, in, in Jigawa state and, that, and Zafra state. So the chart on the left shows uh, the campaigns. Okay. Then a uh, watch component, um, in terms of in short term, we, we are doing we are providing safe water and uh, water chlorination, household disinfection and hygiene promotion in affected areas with intensive risk communication through radio and television television jingles, as well as distribution of IEC materials. But we are also prioritizing using the hotspot uh, uh, that we have done to prioritize the provision of motorized solar powered water boreholes. Then on the right side, we have the long term, as we, all, as we have said before, uh, cholera is a, de is a developmental problem when the water infrastructure, wash infrastructure is not there. So I will stop here for now. Back to you, Malita. Thank you very much for your attention. So I just want to uh, say that um, now that we know the model, we, we know the, we can predict uh, cholera in Nigeria. We are aware that um, it happens uh, at the, the end of dry season, February and, I mean, uh, February and May, and then during rainy season, June to October, and then there's a sharp fall in mid-November. And also we know that it happens in waves of two to three years, uh, sometimes two to four years. Um, therefore, the timing of seasonal outbreak preparedness response plan has to align with this trend. So we are making plans to ensure that targeted hotspot local government areas are vaccinated before the onset of outbreak seasons. 
However, the success of these plans, as we have all discussed, uh, as we have noted before, will depend on the uh, effect in, uh, not just on effectiveness of wash conditions, but on availability of OCD stockpile, especially in countries that are having issues with wash infrastructure. So I will uh, uh, thank you very much and uh, back to you, Malika.